Welcome to the New Hampshire Filmmaker Interview Series. I'm Bill Humphreys. And you know, last April in 2014, the band Tan Vampires, who resides here in the Seacoast, received three Spotlight Awards at the annual Spotlight on the Arts Awards. Those awards were for Favorite Band, Best Indie Group, and for Best Song of the Year, which was entitled Into the West. Now, today's interview is not so much about the band, Tan Vampires, as it is about the gentleman who created and directed the music video for the song Into the West. He's our guest today, Jeremy Collins. Jeremy, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your being here. Congratulations on your entrance into the, uh, into the festival. Thank you. Thank you. This is your first entry into the New Hampshire Film Festival? It is, yes. And it was really, I mean, living on the seacoast, it's something that I wanted to submit it to, and luckily they wanted to take us. And this is not in necessarily a music video category, but uh, a short film category? Correct, yeah. The, there's some film festivals out there that have separate music video categories. Uh, the New Hampshire Film Festival submission process didn't have that, so we went ahead and submitted it as a short film and um, you know, didn't know if they'd even you know, look at it, but they took it, and as well as a few other music videos this year, so it's pretty exciting. That's great. Well, where, where did the point in your mind make the switch to say, well, this is a music video, but I'm going to submit it as a short film? Um, well, I mean, the whole video itself is more structured like a short film. Um, it's not so much the band performing, you know, at, a, at specific locations as it actually follows a storyline, just instead of dialogue, it has a song. So I figured it might fit the mold. That sounds interesting. I, I, I can appreciate how you try and move out of one genre into another or multi-purposing one genre for another. Perhaps? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read to uh, I'm going to read to the audience what it says on the uh, synopsis here because <coughs> without actually looking at the film immediately, which I want to hold off on because um, I don't want to uh, blow the suspense here. So I'm just going to put these particular words into your minds out there for a second to uh, give you an idea of what this video is all about. The music video for Into the West by the Tan Vampires. The video follows the story of an oversized pant leg. After continually facing discrimination due to his shortcomings, he unexpectedly begins to meet various other characters who share similarities. Another pant leg, a torso, a couple of arms, and a head. They join him throughout his day, and after the group includes all the necessary pieces, they form a single being and live happily ever after. Now, we'll show you the video in just a few minutes, but I want to find out just, with, with that plopped in their minds, how did, how did you conceive of or create these characters and this particular storyline? What was the process? Well, whenever I try to develop a concept for a music video, I don't so much just you know, take the text of the lyrics and, and create a storyline from there. I usually lock myself in a dark room and listen to the song over and over and over, um, more focusing on the music, the mood of the song, um, the feel as it progresses, and kind of let that guide the story. Um, came up with lots of different ideas. Um, this is one that I don't know how, but I imagined a giant pant leg walking around and uh, pitched that to the band and they went for it. Uh, luckily, I've worked with them before in a previous video for a song called Digital Rot, so I realized that they like a little more abstract ideas and, and are willing to accept a little more different things. Different things. <laughs> I just, I'm always curious as to how people come up with ideas. And um, was there a moment in the, in the creative thought process when you thought, hmm, pant legs? Yeah, I was just sitting there again. I think I was laying on the floor, um, just in a dark room with headphones, and uh, popped in my head. So I grabbed a notebook and actually sketched out my vision. And then, um, you know, went through it a bunch more times and started sketching out these other characters. And, you know, I, I changed them a little bit over time. But, um, yeah, so I still have my original weird sketches from popping up and imagining a giant pant leg, a giant arm, and them becoming friends. <laughs> Has anybody given you any uh, uh, comments as to 
being whacked out is to come up with pant legs? Is it? No, no one's actually really looked at me too weird. Um, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, that's one of the things that people heard it and really didn't understand it. So it's like you have to have those sketches to explain it. Um, but I mean, the band liked it. And then, you know, from there, now that, you know, people have seen the video, um, they understand if I explain it, what I'm actually explaining. Um, but no, no one's actually looked at me too, <laughs> too strangely, to me at least. I, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> move away from that just for a half a second and get into your background. What, where did you start your interest in, in film or working with camera? Um, I've always been playing around with making videos, films, movies. Um, I remember when I was probably, you know, 10, always grabbing a camera and making lots of horror movies. Um, that's pretty much where I started, I'd say, making horror movies with friends. Um, and then that grew into making skateboarding videos. And then um, just over time, just trying to improve more and more. Um, you know, then with life, I kind of found myself into, you know, professional jobs and it kind of taking a back seat. Um, then the opportunity arose where I was doing it a little bit on the side and I had lots of free time on my hand. Um, the company I was working for went under. So that's when I was like, I'm going to do this professionally. So I actually now run a video production company called Ellipsis Entertainment. And we focus on pretty much anything you could think of video wise, a lot of corporate work, commercial work. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So you're, you find yourself uh, working more in short form than long form? Um, well, with, with the business, everything's a lot more short form, I'd mm -hmm. say. Um, that's the tough part is music videos, there's really no money in it anymore. So to survive, kind of have to have that balance of different um, jobs and stuff like that. So trying to mm -hmm. find the creative stuff and make time for it and, and whatnot is, is something that I'm always you know, reaching for. Yeah. So growing up then, getting out of uh, horror movies and into skate movies and so forth like that, um, working with your friends, did you make a decision at any point to go to film school? Have you been to film school? Or? I never went to film school. Um, you know, going to college and stuff, I took every different, you know, film-based class you could take. Um, but for some reason, film school never jumped out to me as something that I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And luckily with technology these days, you know, you can still meet people and and create stuff and have it seen by things just because the glory of the internet yeah yeah so you're more of a self-taught definitely yeah, yeah i've never taken a class or anything with that just being hands-on with things my whole life yeah what's the most difficult part of of uh creating whatever you're working on be it a corporate video or a commercial or a music video what's the most difficult part for you when when you are working from your own gut as opposed to having some kind of formal background? Um, for me, I guess it's um, just scaling things down. You know, with, with anything, I come up with this grand idea and how I envision it and I see it perfectly in my head, but it's just trying to make that happen. You know, with a lot of things, you might not have the budget that you need or the crew and things like that. Um, so it's pretty much just trying to find different ways to make it happen as close to your vision as possible um, with not being, you know, going to film school and whatnot. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in anything, um, kind of learn what I need to learn to, to make things happen. Um, but luckily, there's so many great people in the area that you can work with that will, you know, add their expertise. So it seems to me like there is a uh, 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 I guess I'll call it a genetic thing within filmmakers where you, you have a vision and you know how to carry it forward um, in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Do you have difficulty at all in expressing that to other people so that they'll buy into your idea? Often. Yeah. Um, for example, I'm, I'm pitching a, another music video idea to someone else and I wrote it out exactly how I envision it and had someone read it and they did not understand it at all. Um, so, you know, that's why I try to do little sketches and anything to try to really make people see what I see. Um, takes a little bit of time sometimes and then, and then finally, you know, they can grasp, grasp what I'm trying to explain and that's, that's usually a good jumping off point then. 
You did another uh, film for uh, uh, Tan Vampires called uh, Digital Rot. Uh, can you just explain that particular project? Um, so with anything that I do, I'm definitely more of a hands-on type of in actuality person than special effects. Um, so with that video, um, I just felt like something fragmented should be done. So the, the way that the video is, is we actually have nine old TVs um, stacked together so it creates a, a square and together they build a single frame. Um, so if you envision it, it's one picture cut across the nine TVs and rather than you know, using special effects or cutting it in post and just kind of layering them on, we actually went and filmed things nine different times from nine different angles. So if we, with the storyboard, you know, we'd have a picture of someone's face, but rather than filming it, we'd use one camera, film the top left frame, then the top center frame, and so on. And then we had all those connected to DVD players and all played them and synced them up at the exact same time. Um, the way I, the reason I wanted to do that uh, is because it creates a little more of a fragmented feel rather than just an image cut up and spliced together. There's little camera different angles and things like that. So overall, it just creates a more strange look. And so slightly out of sync as well. The exactly, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely something that you probably got to watch a couple times to <coughs> really understand it all. And you know, within the action, there's actually a story as well, mm -hmm. um, kind of tied to technology mm -hmm. on the actual TVs playing. Yeah. You consider yourself a, uh, a visual learner, I would imagine. I, I think so, yes. Yeah. And your work, would that particularly in something like Digital Rot, I, I would think so, uh, certainly in uh, Into the West, but uh, would you, would you if you had to label it, which I don't know, I, I get the sense that you're probably not a labeler. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> but, but if you had to label it, would you call it um, uh, visual art or digital art? Or is there an art form in what you're creating? Or Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what I would specifically call it. Um, that's the great thing is with music videos, too, is it's also tied to the art that is the music itself. Right. Um, so I like the broad label art. I think that that fits the mold well. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, um, do you have difficulty in, in uh, expressing thoughts or ideas or concepts to uh, commercial clients where the, where the vein of communication is a little bit more straightforward? I'd say it's a lot more straightforward with the commercial work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the stuff that we do is a lot more, you know, straightforward to what their vision is. Um, rather than bringing us in to create the concept, things like that, we'll definitely work with them. Um, but it's a lot more normal, I'd say, <laughs> compared to yeah. the music videos. If you had to pick a, uh, a particular genre or a particular idea or concept, the visual that you would like to present in a, in a short film or even a long film, where, where would that idea lead you? Where, where would you go with the idea of Take, take whatever visual element you have in your own mind and what would you want to present with it? Um, I mean, <clears throat> it's really all over the place. You know, some of the things that I think of are a lot more um, landscape and environmental and then, you know, some stuff is more storyline based and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it really is all over the place. I wouldn't say, you know, I think if you watch some of the stuff, you can see the stuff that I gravitate towards, um, but as far as explaining, you know, one thing, one direction, it's kind of hard for me to mm -hmm. narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if we can't explain a little bit of what's inside your mind and have the audience take a look at uh, Into the West right now. We'll uh, take a quick look at the video and then we'll be right back. All of my friends have gone chasing the sun into the west I'm feeling restless I'm hearing the call I've been imagining magical worlds It's not a feeling that I can explain but you will
So, Jeremy, let me ask you um, about working with body parts. Mm -hmm. um, you've got two arms, two legs, a torso, and a, and a head. Yes. Um, how did you go about casting two arms, two legs, a torso, and a head? Um, there was some difficulty. Um, <laughs> we actually had some people who definitely weren't interested because I think they just felt like they weren't going to be able to be themselves. Um, but luckily we did find some great people um, just throughout the New England area. Um, the, the whole pre-production of the music video took so long that we had to start building some of the costumes before we cast people. So we kind of had like height ranges as well uh, to try to figure out who would fit the, uh, where and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but as far as working with them, um, they were great. Um, you know, try to scale them back a bit because it, it was hard for them to um, be serious, as you can imagine, being yeah. in a, a giant suit. But yeah. I was I was thrilled with every single person that we cast. Did anybody say I'm I'm more of a head than I am a torso? Or no, we didn't have that. Uh, luckily, everyone felt their role and and uh, embraced it. That's that's a very good thing that somebody can can embrace the fact that they are going to be a, uh, a leg. Yeah, I think. Or a, a right arm. Yeah, and, and strangely, no one had experience working as a body part, so <laughs> it was a first for them all. So everybody's got something new to look forward exactly, to. Exactly, yes. <laughs> um, how long did you take in shooting the piece? Um, we filmed over three days um, with a couple pickup shots a different day, but mm -hmm. we condensed it pretty well. and. Just, it, it went pretty smoothly the entire, the entire three days. Yeah. And your production time, I mean, uh, from start to finish, how long would it take from, Ooh, from, from, from concept to finished product? From concept to finished product was probably six months. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it took a while. Yeah. I mean, the costumes itself, um, we had a great uh, costume designer down in Worcester named Jessica Lee Van Winkle, and she took all my sketches and, and was able to piece together those costumes. and. Um, I was amazed. How could you possibly come up with a better name for a costumer that was going to do body parts? Right? I know exactly. I, I, right away, I knew she was the one. What, one of the one of the most difficult things I think sometimes when you're trying to do a piece like this uh, is to try and find people who will buy into letting them, uh, letting you use their locations. Mm -hmm. Have you? Did you have any difficulty? You had a, a shot at uh, Surrey Street Bakery. No, luckily, you know, we went in and met with a lot of people and, and they were interested. Great, you know, New Hampshire is great because it allows, um, you know, a lot of people embrace, you know, the film industry. So mm -hmm. I'm just explaining to them. I think, you know, they saw the passion and, and that we kind of knew what we were doing and, and definitely wanted to help out. So we were lucky in that sense. That's, um, it's a really good thing that the community uh, in the Seco seems to be very accepting to the arts in, in all forms, but also to, um, I don't know, and I, um, uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a while and I used to have a couple of people come to the knock on the door and they'd say, you know, I'm from so such and such a studio and we'd like to use your house as an exterior. And the first thing you think is, no, mm -hmm. I don't want film crews tromping all over my front lawn. But you didn't experience any of that. No, I mean, no one, no one had any issues with us. Um, I think a lot more people were curious, especially, um, you know, just out and about when we were filming a lot of the exteriors. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of those in Portsmouth. And, um, you know, people would see, you know, five people in giant, you know, costumes walking around and no one, no one really, you know, gave us any gruff. They all embraced it. Well. Embrace. That's great. That's great. So what's uh, coming up for you in the down the pike? What what have you got ahead of yourself? Um, I'm working with a, a couple bands right now, trying to um, you know square away some music videos. I definitely am aiming in that more of that music video direction. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know you can be a lot more strange, and they have you know strict time frames that you know you follow with that. that. And the great thing about music videos is the bands already have a built-in. Um, you know, fan base, things like that. So getting it out there is, you're over that initial step. Yeah. Um, so I'm working with a few bands right now, developing concepts and in, in, uh, storyboarding at this point. Nice. Do you have anything working, uh, that you're working towards that's in a longer format? 
Uh, not at this time. I mean, back in the day, um, you know, I used to do a lot of longer stuff on my own, short films, long, you know, I actually did a feature, not anything, you know, that I'd look at now and, and promote, but, um, you know, it was, you know, old, old, that's, so that, those are my, more my roots, and then I went to music video, so I'm, I'm staying away from that at the time, you know, maybe eventually it'll loop back around there, yeah. but. Music videos, uh, short form, have you ever thought of expanding yourself into a different genre, such as documentary, or? Um, I've, you know, I've done a lot of different things, um, especially with the, the business, you know, I've, I've done more documentary style pieces and things like that. Um, but I definitely say the creative part of something like a music video is, is um, you know, that production aspect is what, what drives me the most. Mm -hmm. When you look at yourself as a director, what's, of all of the instruments that you have to work with in your toolbox as a director, what's your, what, what, where do you pinpoint your focus? Uh, is it visual, is it camera, is it sound, is it editing, is it... Uh, um, well, whereas I've pretty much handled everything myself, um, I like to think that um, I, can, I can delve a little bit in all of them, but I definitely say more of the visual side um, is, is probably where I, where I lean. Mm -hmm. um, I like to work directly with the actors and, and explain you know, vision and, and things like that to mm -hmm. you know, the director of photography and, and whatnot and, and use their expertise as well. Um, you know, that's a great thing is there's so many skilled people in the area that you can rely on them yeah. to, you know, help the vision of the overall yeah. project. Do you have any difficulty in uh, expressing yourself to actors? Is, are, they re, are they accepting of what you have to say or? Yeah, usually it's, it's pretty good. Um, you know, try to build that rapport with them, yeah. you know, right off the bat so that you guys are on the same page and, and work from there. So usually it's a, it's a pretty smooth process. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, thank you very much for, uh, for being with us. Oh, thank you for having for me. For the last half hour, we really appreciate it. Have an opportunity to see your work, and, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the festival. And thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time on the New Hampshire Filmmakers Interview Series. I'm Bill Humphreys. Take care.